four years after the death of Salcedo. If you missed the story of Salcedo, it's the previous episode. Dr. Viega interviewed two Filipino men who had arrived in Manila with much gold. These men claimed that the gold came from a wealthy area called Itui. There were only two ways to enter Itui. A small pass that went over the mountain from Pangasinan or up the Cagayan River. Governor Gonzalez wanted to root out the Japanese and Chinese pirates in the area, Christianize the Cagayanese, and give them a civilized society. The Cagayanese were suffering from their own issues. During this time, the Lower Cagayan Valley was engaged in a civil war between two local chiefs, Tuliao and his brother. It was reported that the war was so ferocious that the life which they led did not deserve the name of life because of the daily alarms to which they were exposed. Brother was unable to trust brother, and no man left his house unarmed or without great danger. He who had the greatest power made as many slaves as possible. When the poor people were dying of hunger because they could not cultivate their fields on account of the war. In 1582, Captain Carrion found his way to the north side of Luzon. The only report that we have from the 1582 Cagayan battles are from the Spanish side, and some historians have pointed out that most likely the details were exaggerated by the Spanish to encourage the King of Spain to send more troops, supplies, and people to the Philippines. Captain Carrion first attacked a Chinese vessel off the coast of northern Luzon. The small ship was no match for the Spanish fleet. While rounding Cape Borgador, Captain Carrion engaged a Japanese ship. This Japanese ship was much more capable and attacked Carrion's ship in return. Allegedly, these pirates had breastplates and guns and boarded Carrion's galley. The Spanish were able to repel the pirates, but some men were killed, including Captain Pedro Lucas. Captain Carrion and his fleet found their way to the Cagayan River. and At the opening, they reported a fort with 11 Japanese ships. According to another report, Carrion passed by these ships. While going up the river, a lookout ship returned, telling the captain to return to Manila because there were thousands of Japanese on the river with a great deal of artillery. Carrion was unable to turn around and anchored in a bay. A storm came, causing much damage to his ship, forcing the Spanish to fortify on a small islet. The Spanish erected a fort and dug trenches, and the others boarded the St. Jessup. The Woku pirates attempted to negotiate peace with the Spanish for the loss of the gold that they were going to suffer. Captain Carrion denied their request. The pirates attacked Carrion's position. The Spanish repelled the first and second waves of the attack, but found themselves in a difficult situation. They were running low on gunpowder, and the Woku breached their position. The Spanish had oiled their pikes, making it difficult for the pirates to grab them. The Woku assault fell, and the Spanish went on the offensive, killing the remaining Japanese and Chinese pirates. The battle gives us some great detail about what was going on in the Cagayan Valley before 1582. First, colonization was happening before the Spanish arrived. Two, there was piracy and conflict between Chinese and Japanese merchants and the local population. Three, the Japanese and Chinese merchants understood that the Cagayan Valley was very valuable, enough so to give their lives fighting for it. Four, trade between the Cagayanese and the Japanese and the Chinese was enough to support a large settlement in the area. It is interesting to note that Juan de Salcedo did not report any settlements by Japanese, Chinese, or any other people in the area. We can only surmise from that two things. One, Salcedo never got close enough to the Cagayan River to really look at it and see what was going on, or these settlements were not in existence at this time. After the Spanish won the battle, they established the first European settlement in the Cagayan Valley called Nueva Segovia. Today, the city is called Lalo. Now the Japanese and the Chinese pirates out of the way, the Spanish could focus on the locals. 
According to Dr. Vega, the Cagayanese had already had three bad interactions with the Spanish. Captain Carrion was ordered not to collect tribute for one year. The Spanish desired to get things off to a good start. They became aware of the civil war between Tuliao and his brother. At this time, Tuliao had captured his brother and stuck him in a cage. That the brother pleaded to be killed or set free. Both were denied. This incident eventually led to the intervention of the Spanish, who took control of the land contested by the brothers, ending their strife, but also leading to the subjugation of the local population. With an established settlement and the Japanese kicked out of the area, the Spanish can now focus on their two other missions, the Christianization of the Cagayan Valley and tax collecting. Sorry, establishing a civilized society. Two things the Cagayanese were not interested in. In our next video, Tiluau and another local chief go on an adventure to Manila to negotiate a deal to have the Spanish leave the Cagayan Valley.